guys, uh, welcome back to the channel Opinions Matter. Uh, we are at the RC field today. We are going to test out uh, the Fat Shark Bite Frost. Um, to be very frank, it's been, it's been there in the market for a long time now, already like a week or so. And this is our test field. So let's go and dive in and show you the wiring diagram. So it's a complete setup guide with what sort of stuff you're going to face. Remember this, that guys, this is not a DJI alternative. So if you guys think that this is a DJI alternative, no. It's just taking the analog signal, converting that into a digital format, and then presenting it. So it's a whole another system, and it's a whole different kind of system. Yes, it mimics the DJI system, but it is not a DJI system. So, um, And also, we're going to show you something that if you are flying in a club where a lot of people are flying your DJI Mavics, this will the the signal will interfere with this and you might lose transmission suddenly in mid-flight so be very careful if you are flying around pilots who are flying um dji products okay Alrighty, guys so forgive me for background noise today there will be a lot of noise because uh, my microphone doesn't seem to work properly it always something or the other happens so this is the bite frost kind of a unit that uh, you can actually put it on a stack this is a 30 by 30 stack uh, very neat and clean in presentation. Also, the camera comes with it. So this is a run cam camera. You can use a Fox here, but those will be unlocked later on. Wiring is probably the most simplest thing you have ever done in your life. So let me show you the wiring on it. Alrighty, let's uh, open this up really quick. Okay. Alrighty, so at first uh, for the camera, uh, you guys need to get this, uh, actually you need to get a battery, so as you, I'm using a T-Motor F4, so I have to solder these two pad to get battery voltage, so that's positive, that will get a battery voltage, and a ground negative. This connects to this unit and goes all the way to the front, and the rest you can connect to the camera. Now, um, when I turn this around, you will see there is a TX and RX button uh, pad out here. So you have to make a TX and RX, you have to solder these two points and uh, you can solder it in a spare, spare UART. So you can, as, as you can see, I've soldered this in two spare UARTs out here into T4 and R4. And that's pretty much it. All you can leave this alone. Now, uh, this pigtail adapter or right angle adapter to my antenna, this was not given by the, it was not included in the package. So you have to get a 90 degree angle kind of an SMA adapter if you want, or you can run a direct MMCX to a omnidirectional antenna, you know, like that's what you can do. If you are wondering, uh, we are using this, this is your FPV station. This is what's included. And they also include a fat shark battery, but I would actually recommend you that at first go ahead and install an SD card out here and use USB-C as power and HDMI to run to your goggles. Okay, for all of you guys who want to join the hobby, and this is, I think, the perfect time to join, is uh, why? Because you can like buy very cheap set of HDMI goggles. Uh, as you can see, this one has an HDMI in, and you'll be good. Now, this is 269, but this was donated to me as, you know, as a spare, spare, somebody had a spare. So they donated this to me, but, uh, the thing is that any cheap HDMI goggles will run with this setup. So now what we are going to do, we are going to go back to the field again and we are going to show you some footage and I'm going to comment on all the footage and my experience and as a pilot, what I was feeling about it. In that way, you can understand better. Now, uh, in antenna setup, um, everybody's telling that you need two, uh, two like two Omni and two patch antennas or directional antennas but i was running four omnis and there was a pattern that i was running uh, so i'll show you that pattern also apart from that you will also get this board please make sure you do not lose this board at all uh, then what you guys need to do is connect this board out here power and all that stuff so you plug it down he out here with our props on never should do this but my receiver is not on so you're good um then you will see out here uh, this board so what you can do is that you can actually click this. This is your channel right now. You can keep on clicking and change your channel. So there are four high quality channels. I'm in channel number three. Now hold this and it saves, okay? And now this, when you see this dot appearing, this is your milliwatt. 
so you get this is 25 milliwatt this is 200 i think so and this is 450 and after that you have to hold this button and it will save when you see that eight sign which means that you are, you are set now this will turn super hot so do not plug it in for a long time um, otherwise this place this metal actually turns super hot okay so now i'm going to unplug everything and we're going to put that quad, quad, quad back and then we will try to fly this Alrighty, so at first um i you guys really need to acknowledge this that you probably or i probably have not seen something so clear when it comes to you know like kind of transitioning from analog to hd fpv latency on this is super low in latency as right now as you can see right now and uh, hdr actually is really good uh, just because i think the fox uh, the run cam actually is doing a better job in hdr but man that quality actually looks really really good out there you can see the shades of green out there you can see the sun not blocking you or anything it feels as if you are running on a gopro hero 4 or a hero 5 uh, at 1080p um there are something that you guys need to notice also you see those small dots uh, you'll be noticing that those dots actually keep on coming in now the as per the manual of fat shark they said use two omni two patch but watch what happens when we were using two omni and two patch um it was glitching us on us for a long time and we were getting a lot of static and interference but um, i think there was a dji phantom that was also flying around and maybe the signal is causing some sort of interference and this test needs to be done one more time so we will be confirming you on that uh, we are running a test where we can actually put two dji phantoms and see whether the signal actually interferes with our signal or not because it is not a signal hop technology and yes guys if you are wondering is this a dji fpv air alternative nope this is something really really different it's taking an analog signal converting into digital format and then outputting into it digital so it's basically that v vrx as you are seeing um that's like a digital converter that's what's happening inside it so which i mean like which doesn't needs more explanation than that as you can understand totally uh now uh watch what happens when uh, we are using 450 milliwatt with four omnis and um and we asked the phantom pilot to actually land down so i mean like look at the quality you can see the sides of the trees you can even see a ghost branch that's how ima amazing the quality is that you know like and even at shades um you i mean like previously we were not even seeing anything out here i'm just testing whether at a distance of 0 0.5 uh, kind of mile uh, well what happens when we be really really low to the ground as you can see there should be a signal break right here yeah but that's a minor break and at that distance you have so much of obstruction in front of you that probably the reason you know like you might get a little bit of static otherwise this is a solid solid setup uh, at 0 0.5 miles we have to do a range test so it's still on its process uh, because i'm running like fr sky r9 um, mini receiver on it with an r9m light not a very big um, range so we did another range test out here and uh, hold on a second this is 450 milliwatt at 0 0.5 mile uh, or around about 3000 feet from the home point um, at an altitude of 150 so as you can see right now uh, the sky looks beautiful the dynamic range looks nice the greens are much more green uh, yes i used to see um, i used to run tbs fusion and uh, rapid fire and all that stuff but they still used to suffer some sort of glitch which i do not see out here at all there's literally no glitch out here there is no signal break or anything i just love the way it feels you know like and for me uh keeping all my gear intact i probably even do not even need a dji fpv air unit but then again it remains upon more testing we will have to do more stuff so till then this is our honest opinion all right guys so final thoughts on this um impressive that uh, you know like this whole conversion thing actually it's so a lot of people were saying that it's gimmicky because it's just converting uh, from an analog to an HD uh, but on the contrary there is very low latency on this I can understand that the monitor is very huge and you have to carry another set of monitor which is frustrating but you know like it also gives uh, beginners those who are joining the hobby they will not deal with any crappy quality 
video or anything for breaking up or anything so I think um, at a price point of 399 it might be a little steep but this is solid bang for the buck and you get to keep your own gear but I want your uh, comments and thoughts on this so please write down in a comment section below what you guys think about it um, what, do you think this is an alternative kind of stuff for the DJI FPV Air um, I can totally understand DJI FPV Air is on a whole other unit and we will do a side-by-side -side comparison next uh, next week or anything where we'll be comparing footage I have seen DJI FPV system I have flown with it they look amazing in video quality obviously you cannot beat that breakups and interference I was getting breakups and I was seeing interference with some other DJI units flying around so that is my kind of test and uh, what I found it out also one more stuff uh, that you guys need to note um, for bi-directional antenna or omni antenna was working well enough patch antennas I've ordered some extra patch antennas and next time we will make sure that whenever you are running the test or anything we do not have any DJI Phantom nearby because if other DJI Phantoms are outputting at maybe one watt uh, some even lone limit drones one are up outputting two watt of uh, power you know like uh, two milli not yeah two watt of power so we'll make sure we that that doesn't happen um, as far as the results go these were the, all the results in front of you do leave in a comment section below what you guys think about it um, and give me a big big thumbs up you like this test um, this is not uh, a tutorial or anything this is a quick kind of complete guide and set up and how to use everything and I hope I could make you interest it make it interesting for you guys so till then see you again on another episode uh, goodbye